So welcome to this segment on how to take a gynecological history. Um, I wanted to jazz up these slides with some nice pictures uh, that were not copyrighted and there are not many of those out there. So you are going to be, whether you like it or not, you're going to be entertained to photographs of some of the women in my own family. Uh, we will start now. I plundered deep into the archives to get the most ridiculous outfits I could find. That is my mom as a young woman in her radical 70s jumpsuit thing. So, yeah, I just want to keep you awake and keep things a little bit more lively than just plain old slides. Let's go. So, when you take a gynae history, you are talking about issues of a very personal and intimate nature, and you need to be sensitive to that. Um, you need to be friendly, open, concerned, and objective. So you have to avoid coming into that kind of interview with preconceived ideas about, for example, sexuality or judgments about how many sexual partners someone may have, um, because that is just not your job as the doctor. Your job is to provide um, adequate health care. Um, when you are consulting, especially when you're talking about these kinds of issues, it should be in a private, safe environment where nobody can overhear, and you should ensure confidentiality as well in the consultation. Now, this is my grandmother, Barbara, with her rocking 60s hairstyle uh i yeah um i don't my hair would never be able to do that it's too curly but there she is looking very glamorous i don't know what she's doing but yeah so that is my mother's mother um what we're going to go through in the slides is um how to ask about the main complaints what to ask about in the gynecological and obstetric history as well as the medical and surgery history, surgical history, and then allergies and relevant, note relevant family history, and also the social history. So the personal history is just a brief introduction to your patient. So you introduce yourself, hello, I'm Dr. So-and-so, and then you get your patient's name, ask them how old they are, whether they're in a relationship, whether they're working or not, and what work they do. That just kind of breaks the ice um, and allows you to progress with the interview. When it comes to the presenting complaint, you need to allow your patient to explain in her own manner without interrupting what her complaint is. And the research shows that most patients will tell their whole story within two minutes. So there's actually no reason to rush them. Just let them tell everything. You can always go back and uh, revisit some aspects if you need to, um, but allow them to tell their story while you're making eye contact with them. And then obviously the history when it comes to gynae will depend on the age of the patient. So this is my other grandmother, my father's father. That's her looking young and sprightly on the beach. That's her more towards her middle age and that's her well into her 80s. So the kind of history I'm going to take from um, my grandmother Cornelia on the left, the young woman, is going to be different to the history I take from my grandmother Cornelia on the right, the much older woman, because the kind of problems experienced in those age groups are obviously going to be different. So I want to go into a little bit more detail about um, two very common complaints in gynae then the first one is about bleeding either too much bleeding too little bleeding or not in the right pattern so when it comes to abnormal bleeding um, well in fact any clinical symptom you'd want to know when the problem started you want to know whether the menstrual cycle is regular so is she bleeding at the same time every month or is it completely unpredictable and irregular because those have got definite um, diagnostic implications. You want to know how many days she's bleeding for and how much she's bleeding. So that pile of glitter on the left here is to denote very heavy bleeding. You also want to know about dysmenorrhea and dysmenorrhea is basically period pains. So is there any severe or disabling um, dysmenorrhea at the time of menstruation? And if somebody is having very heavy bleeding um, do they have 
um, periods, excuse the pun, periods of amenorrhea in between, because if somebody is having a heavy period now and then nothing for three months and then another heavy period, that is diagnostically significant. Um, and then uh, we're not going to go into too much detail about the uh, endocrinopathies relevant to gynae in third year, um, but you would ask about things that relate to polycystic ovarian syndrome in someone who is having irregular periods or no periods or bleeding very heavily with periods of amenorrhea in between. So you would ask about her suitism, which is extra hair on the body, acne, which is a sign of virilization, and both of those are part of PCOS. Very important is to ask um, all women about contraception, um, except obviously if they are no longer in the fertile period. But contraception can lead to bleeding problems. So that's a really, really important question to ask. And then, of course, you want to know to what extent is this abnormal bleeding impacting on a woman's life. So, for example, if she's bleeding so heavily that she's soiling her clothes at work um, and maybe is isolating herself, not going out because it's too embarrassing, or she doesn't want to have um, intercourse because she's bleeding so heavily, that could have a, a significant impact on the relationship. So you want to know about how this is in fact, uh, impacting on her life. And then if we look at amenorrhea, which is no periods at all, or oligomenorrhea, which is far fewer periods. So that's, you know, you have one and then three months of nothing and you have one. Again, you want to know how long that problem has um, been there for. Has it been since menarche or is it more recent? Um, if the woman is oligomenorrheic, you want to know how many cycles um, are there between menstruations. And here in particular, um, in cases of amenorrhea or oligomenorrhea, this is um, where the endocrinopathies really do play a key part. So you would want to ask about features of polycystic ovarian syndrome. And again, contraception. I love contraception. It's the best, but it can cause problems. It, it often takes the period away or gives irregular spotting. So that could be the cause of the problem. And... Um, menopause is when the periods switch off forever and prior to that there's usually a time where the periods become less frequent and so menopause doesn't always only happen in the woman who's 50 51 which is the average you do get premature menopause so in a woman who's had sustained amenorrhea even if they're younger you would want to ask about the other symptoms of menopause such as the hot flashes or um, mood swings things like that and again you want to ask about the effect on this person's life um, one of the big issues around amenorrhea or oligomenorrhea is that it implies that that woman is not ovulating which means that um, uh, fertility might be an issue so there's your um, very sparse glitter, not bleeding much at all. Now this person, I don't know who she is, but she was in one of our family albums. And I don't know, she looks, I don't know, a bit uncomfortable. Maybe she's got lower abdominal pain. It's a stretch. I don't know who you are. But lower abdominal pain is uh, a a big reason that women are um, referred to gynees, even though there's lots of other organs in the abdomen, they all get sent for a gynae evaluation, which maybe isn't such a bad thing unless all the symptoms are like totally bowel related, which I see often. Again, you're going to want to know the duration of the complaint. You want to know whether the pain coincides with the period. So is it dysmenorrhea or is it pain at other times of the cycle as well? Um, dyspareunia, very important. So if there's lower abdominal pain, um, is that pain um, experienced or made worse by sexual intercourse? Then you want to know whether the pain is radiating anywhere. You want to know about aggravating or relieving factors. Um, and you specifically want to ask about analgesia because women who have ongoing severe chronic pelvic pain, and you will learn more about this, um, sometimes they get so de desperate that they just eat handfuls of whatever analgesia they can get their hands on, and that can have um, potential consequences on, on the kidneys, the liver, general health. 
uh, low abdominal pain, you definitely want to ask about a vaginal discharge because um, pelvic inflammatory disease causes low abdominal pain and it can give you a vaginal discharge. And then you do want to ask about the urinary or GIT symptoms because these other organ systems are also in the pelvis and if they are uh, inflamed or there's a problem, they can also cause low abdominal pain. So you're asking all of these things because they are diagnostically significant and they will um, refine and inform your, um, your list of differential diagnoses. Okay, now let's talk about the gynecological history. So what we've covered so far is um, what the, the, is really unpacking the entire complaint. So what are all the things that are related to that complaint? The gynae history, uh, that's me, obviously. Um, I find this picture actually hilarious. Somebody asked me how I was at one point and I sent them this photo when I was on my 427,000th um, Vula webinar learning how to do online teaching and I hope it's paid off. So what you want to know in the gynae history, you want to know everything about the periods. You want to know if the periods are abnormal at the moment. You want to know what was normal, um, what was the pattern, um, when was menarche, how long does the menstrual cycle last and how long are the periods, um, how significant is the flow of the periods, and you also want to know when the last menstrual period was um, in the reproductive age group. And then about the reproductive or the reproductive health or sexual health more broadly, um, you again, if you haven't already, you want to ask about contraception and that's highlighted in pink because we're going to talk about it um, again, very important. You want to know if your patient is sexually active because that has got diagnostic implications and you can ask about sexual history um, where relevant. You're not going to ask uh, an 85 year old who's partner died 20 years ago about her sexual history um, if she's not sexually active um, but where it's relevant you can ask um, as long as you ask sensitively and um, explain to the patient why you're asking. You need to ask about any histories of um, and sexually transmitted infections, um, when the most recent HIV test was, and whether they've ever had a pap smear because every single woman who's been sexually active needs to have pap smears. So um, everyone needs to be asked about that. All right, so we're going to carry on with these slides in um, the next video. I have to cut it off now because the software is going to cut me off, but we will be back with the rest of it shortly.